Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about resizing a rectangle. I know, there's probably a couple of you watching who may not have made it this far uh, because resizing a rectangle seems fairly basic, but we get a lot of requests on the forum that people want to take a rectangle they've drawn and change the size of it. And the reason it's not as simple as just typing a value in is because SketchUp functions the way it does. It is a surface modeler, which is different than a parametric model or a solid modeler. So I want to talk about why it does what it does and how to do the thing that's being asked, which is resizing a rectangle after it's drawn. Let's hop in. Okay, so this here is a rectangle. This was drawn with the rectangle tool. I clicked right here, said two foot by three foot, and I got this rectangle. If I pick the rectangle right now, I'll see an entity info. It does not tell me this is a rectangle. It tells me it's a face. A rectangle is not an entity. It is not a thing in SketchUp. It is a tool that allows me to draw edges and faces that the edges are 90 degrees to each other and it creates a solid face. So it creates a rectangle shaped face. That's what the rectangle tool does. Once I have it, I can pick on it I can't change the properties or the size of this from the entity info because again, it doesn't know what a rectangle is. It just knows that this is a face that happens to be six foot square because it's two foot by three foot. Other than that, it's just a face. So resizing it or changing it is a matter of moving or modifying the edges that establish that face. So there's a couple ways. I could think of a handful of ways that I could make a change here. Two in particular that were non-destructive and fairly quick. By non-destructive, I mean, there's always the option. This is the wrong size rectangle. Here's one option. Now grab the rectangle tool and put the right size rectangle in. I'm gonna say that we don't wanna do it. We wanna actually modify what's already here for this example. So I'm gonna say that, so this is two foot by three foot currently. I want it to be three foot by four foot. So I want both edges to go out one foot. If I know the relative change that I want to make, the easiest way that I can think of to do it is to grab move and come over, hover over an edge, start dragging in the direction I want to go, type in the dimension that I want it to move. So this is a relative dimension. I want it to be one, one foot bigger. So type in 12 foot or one foot or 12 inches or one foot, hit enter. Same thing here, start to drag, 12, enter. Now I have a three foot by four foot rectangle. Let's see, it's a 12 foot square. So that's pretty easy. You do move the two edges relative to where they are now. So how much further do they move in or out from where they were before? If I wanna talk about moving the, the size overall, then I could do the same thing, but I would use the scale tool. So if I grab scale right now, this rectangle happens to be oriented the same as the axes. So my scale shows up exactly around the rectangle. If this were rotated or something like that, I might have to play with the axes to get the scale to line up with it. In this case, it works perfect. And here's the big difference is, what I would do here is I'd click here, start dragging just like I did with move, but rather than typing in the relative distance, I would just come and I would just type in the overall length. So I want it to be four foot, so I'd type four foot and hit enter. There we go. A lot of people get caught off guard because they don't understand that scale, when you start dragging it like this, actually shows you a, a relative scale. So this is, I currently drag this to 1.4 times, 1.14 times bigger than it was before, but I can override that with a specific dimension. So I could type in three foot and hit enter, and it will put it to that size. Now, one of the nice things about doing this way is I'm gonna hit undo two times, is I could grab this angle or this corner here and type in the dimension overall. So I could say four foot comma three foot and hit enter. And in theory, that did that in one step. Unfortunately, I typed the dimensions in backwards, so it's turned the wrong direction. This is why I would go by probably doing it one side at a time because I'm kind of guessing as to which one is which. It is still highlighted right now, so I really just have to go three foot comma four foot, enter, but moving it one at a time, I was sure that each move was correct and I didn't have to redo anything. So, if I have rectangles that are all by themselves laying out here in the middle of nowhere and we resize them, I could use move to move relative or scale to move uh, overall total absolute values. Now, what happens if I have, 
I'm the kind of guy who likes to use a mouse and click to points rather than typing in dimensions or something like that. Or if this is the rectangle's in a space, but it needs to be expanded to fill up a space bigger or have snap points, something like that. Let's make some snap points on here. I'm going to click the tape measure and I'm going to click on this line, drag it this way, and then put it at exactly three foot enter. And then this way, I'm going to drag up four foot. So this corner is where this corner should be. And up here, I'm just going to drag this one up 12. Same distance in the end, but this corner needs to go here. So with this, this situation set up, I can do the exact same thing I did before, but I can grab and drag and snap to lines. Same with scale. Now the issue I'm going to run into with scale is because this is not a relative, relatively equal resize, if I drag up, I can't actually get that corner to right here because keeping it uniform would be going a little bit further on this, this long side. So I would have to do this to get that resized. But because the snap points are there, it's real quick and easy to use inferencing to snap there. So same resize, different method. Now, I, I, I just want to look at one. I, I guess I'm not calling these methods, but these are situations you might be in where you, and that's how you would resize these things. I want to look at one other way you could do this, one other tool you could, you could employ, and that is dimensions. I'm going to grab dimensions, and I'm going to draw a dimension here, pull it away a little bit, draw another dimension here, and pull it away a little bit. <clears throat> now, this isn't really a tool to be used. I can't type a difference to this dimension. I can't use this dimension as a parametric handle, but it's there for me to reference as I'm making changes. Um, I'm going to add a couple more. Because these are lines, I can actually come in here and I can just hover over line and pull. Whoops, I hit the wrong. I hit the wrong command. I confuse tape measure and dimension sometimes. But I can click on here and just drag it right out because it is the length of a line. All right, so once this is here, it works pretty much the same. But the nice thing is, so if I'm up here going move, I could actually pull this up and um, if the scenario was right, I could probably drag it right to four foot. I could probably drag this right to three foot. Um, but I'm here to tell you the best way to do things. And this is probably, this is not the best way. This, look, look what a pain this is to get right to three foot. Much easier to just type three foot, enter. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh boy, 12 inches. Because again, I'm moving, which is relative and not absolute. Whereas over here, if I pick this piece and I hit scale. Um, this really doesn't change the process. I'm going to type four foot there and come this way and type three foot. But if you're newer to SketchUp and you're not sure what you're seeing or, or you know you haven't built up the trust that you're doing things the right way and you want to find out what's actually happening, throwing a couple dimensions on there is the perfect use of dimensions. Dimensions aren't really made for output, but on-screen dimensions this is a great way to show you what you're doing and how the changes you're making are affecting the geometry in your model. So something to consider as you're learning how to uh, resize geometry is throwing some dimensions onto that geometry. So like I said, this is a little bit different than a lot of skill builders, but this is a question that was asked so many times and so frequently keeps coming back up. I figured it was worth a quick video because, because it keeps coming up. I uh, hope you liked that video. So do click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week and be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, please leave us a comment. Have you run into this? Do you have some other tips for resizing geometry? Love to hear them. We like making these videos a lot, but we like it even more when it's showing something you want to see. Thank you.